take a look at this picture. At first glance, you might think, that's a space shuttle, well, big deal. But look closer. It has a Soviet flag on it, and for you aviation enthusiasts out there, you will know that what it is sitting on is an Antonov AN-225. It was the hangar that got destroyed in 2022 when Russia invaded Ukraine. Um, but, but what's going on here? Why is there what looks like a space shuttle replica clearly made in the Soviet Union sitting on top of a Soviet plane? First, a bit of history. The American Space Shuttle program started in 1974 with its first flight in 1981 and the last flight in 2011. When the Americans started constructing the Space Shuttle, the Soviets, they were not happy at all. Because from their perspective, they couldn't see the use case for a craft like that other than for military purposes. The Russians were afraid that the Americans would load nukes onto the space shuttle and would fly it in over Russia and would be able to deliver nukes anywhere in Russia much, much faster than any intercontinental ballistic missiles could at the time. Now, this fear was not completely unfounded because during the end of the Second World War in 1945, when the Russians reached Berlin, they were scouring through the uh, remains of, of the of the Nazi like rocket program with the V1 and the V2 rockets. And one of the things that they found was plans and calculations for a craft that would be launched on a rocket and then go up to like three kilometers or 300 kilometers, which is well above uh, the, the common line. And then it would skip off the atmosphere and it would fly all the way up there in space and they would then be able to reach um, New York with the target in the specific calculations and drop bombs on, on New York, continue to skip, come back and then land again. Now that sounds awfully lot like a early like, design for a space shuttle and obviously with military intent. So, so this is why when the Russians suddenly saw the, the Americans building something that from their perspective at the time looked a lot like the plants they saw in 45, they got worried that the Americans found the same things and were now actually trying to build that as a long range, high altitude bomber. So in 1980, the Soviets started their own space shuttle program called Buran, and it was intended to be a nuclear deterrent. They were basically just afraid that the Americans were going to use it to drop nukes, so they wanted to have the same capability. And they ended up actually building a fully functioning space shuttle. It went to space, and in many ways, this space shuttle was far superior than its American counterpart. The construction for the Russian Buran space shuttle started in 1980, where they built no less than eight test models. And they were used to test anything from aerodynamics to sound and thermal isolation, to pressure testing, all those kind of things. One of the models were just basically normal airplane. It was, had the whole like shape of, of the shuttle, but it would just fit normal jet engines on the back and then they would f uh, fly it up and try to land it again, see how it performed aerodynamically. But the construction of the actual Buran space shuttle, the one that went to space, started in 1986 and it was constructed two years later. And on November 15, 1988, the Buran space shuttle was launched uncrewed for its maiden flight. And this is where we begin to see some of the major differences between the Russian Buran space shuttle and the American space shuttle. See, the Buran space shuttle was capable of flying completely autonomously with no people on board. Whereas the NASA space shuttle required to have a crew in order to fly. Another major difference between the two designs was that the American space shuttle, as a lot of you guys will know, had like not including like maneuvering engines, it would have two types of engines at the back. It would have its main large, three main thrusters that would be used during the initial um, launch. And then it would have two smaller uh, thrusters that would be used to deorbit the shuttle later. But that meant that after it's been launched into space, those three main heavy engines were just dead weight that they were carrying around. They would not, they didn't serve a purpose anymore. They were out of fuel. So, what the Russians did was they took those engines and they moved it to the bottom of that center tank. That's big orange tank that we have on the American one. The paint there's white, but it served the same purpose. They put the engines there. And that meant when that tank was empty, well, they were also discarding the engines 
and thereby um, saving a lot of weight, meaning that the Buran shuttle could carry more cargo than the American could, had a, could have more payload on board. So, 88, the shuttle is launched completely autonomously. It flies up, separation, perfect. It goes, orbits Earth, and then goes in for its re-entry, and it lands again flawlessly. Everything worked exactly as, uh, as they could have hoped for. And as it comes in for a landing, there was a slight crosswind of like 61 kilometers per, per hour, or like, what's that, 80, 38 miles per hour of a crosswind. So that's a quite severe crosswind. But despite those quite difficult landing conditions, um, they still managed to stop just three meters off the center line of the runway and just 10 meter long compared to where they were aiming for it to stop. And given that the runway they were landing on was 90 meters wide, and they were just three meters off the center, and that the runway itself was four and a half kilo kilometers, so four and a half thousand meters, and they were just 10 meters long, I think it's fair to say that they hit the spot pretty well. Now, while all this was going on, the Soviets were working on, I think, four more space-capable uh, shuttles where one of them was expected to launch in 1993, also uncrewed. But as you may know, the collapse of the Soviet Union kind of meant that the shuttle wasn't really needed anymore. Remember that they were developing this for military purposes. And with the Cold War over, they didn't need it. And funding was pulled. That means that a lot of these was, was supposed to be spaceworthy crafts were not complete. Some were disassembled. The actual 1.01 version, the one that flew in space, unfortunately got destroyed in 2002 because the hangar was in collapsed. So <laughs> that is no longer with us. What happened to the rest of them? Well, one of them is still sitting in a hangar somewhere in Russia. There's actually a number of YouTube videos around of people going there and, um, and looking at them. Um, I'm gonna link to some of the videos in the description below uh, if you want to go and see that for yourself. Unfortunately, I couldn't get a license to, to use this clip here. So I'm gonna post a link so you can go and watch that there. There's also one that got spotted uh, in 2003 doing a, a Soyuz launch. And you can see from this picture here, you can actually see one of the Buran shuttles sitting there uh, in the background behind the, the Soyuz rocket. Uh, so there might still be a few of them around. Um, but unfortunately, we're probably not gonna see those fly anytime soon. One of the tasks that this trust was paying for was to create a catalog of every single star in the night sky. But it meant that instead of the space station was heading towards the desired splashdown location, it was now heading towards the Southwest Australian 